minds, and we examine Hannah's world, and we, we say, well, you know, you know, as the nation goes, so does the family. Well, we can put it that as the family goes, so does the nation. Today, we can say, as the church goes, so does the family and the, the nation. The, na the church should be leading the way. And so, as we come a little closer there, in chapter 1, we can look at the nation, we can look at the priesthood. What about the home life? Well, I think everybody knows about Alcani, Alcana, uh, Penina, Penina, and Hannah. They, he had two wives, it says there in 1 uh, Samuel 1, verse 2. That, that spells disaster. There's no Mosaic legislation or law in, in the Bible saying that that was permitted. There's no, there's no, there's no, uh, it, just the, the Genesis account, one man, one woman for life. Okay? But maybe, you know, the commentators say this, well, you know, Hannah, his beloved, is barren, so, you know, Alcani will say, well, the best thing is, well, you know, what did, what did, uh, uh, what did uh, Jacob do? What did Sarah do? What did Abraham do? What did Hagar? You know, so we'll, we'll, get, a, we'll get another wife, and, and then this wife, Penina, will, will uh, bear children, and, and we'll be just one big happy family. Well, that didn't happen, for sure. There was strife. Rivalry, there was jealousy, uh, it, it was horrible. I think of um, Alcana, Alcana uh, would have been like Isaac, it would have solved the problem. What did Isaac do when Rebekah was barren? It says in Genesis 25, 21, And Isaac entreated the Lord for his wife, because she was barren, and the Lord was entreated of him, and Rebekah, his wife, I'll get it right, Rebekah, his wife, conceived. That's what Alcana, that's what uh, Alcana should have done, okay? So we look at the, the nation, not in good shape. We look at this particular family, not in shape. But notice something else here as we look at this family uh, under the microscope. It says, but Hannah had no children. And so the problem, okay, Alcana takes Penina, okay, in verse 5, she has children. Penina, like Leah in Jacob's day, used the fact, I think, that she was having children. Maybe she was trying to win Alcana, Alcana's heart. But in that situation, there was animosity, uh, rivalry. Uh, Penina, in a sense, became uh, Hannah's adversary, I think. In some ways, it's, look at verse 6 for a minute. It says, and her adversary also provoked her sore. For to make her fret, because the Lord had shut up her womb. But notice that. It says the Lord had shut up her womb. <laughs> I mean, you, you say, well, you know, the nation is bad, and the, the priesthood is bad, and there's lawlessness, and rebellion, and idolatry, and immorality. And you say, well, we'll come home, and, and uh, you know, there's a struggle, fighting, family, and then you top it off. He said, the Lord had shut up her womb. You know, in those days, ladies, for an Israelite woman not to have children was the judgment of God. But it's interesting, and all the great women of the Old Testament, like, like uh, Sarah, and Rebecca, Rachel, and even Leah for a time, they were all barren. They were all barren until God blessed them. Okay? Now, Hannah means grace, I said, but I wonder, you know, does it sound, does it sound like she's in God's grace? Does it sound like she's in God's favor? You see, the Word of God is very clear. Exodus, let me read a verse to you, Exodus 23, 26. You see, about a, a normal, revived, overcoming, prosperous Israel, where God is in the midst. A normal Israel. God is in the midst. They're overcoming their enemies. You know, all the blessings of Deuteronomy are overtaking them. And one of those blessings is this. Exodus 23, 26. There shall neither cast their young, meaning the women, miscarriages, nor be barren in the land. The number of the days I will fulfill. You know, no, God, they're, they're going to be fruitful, fruitful, fruitful. So barrenness is a sign of judgment. So as we look at the, the, the 
Hannah's world, <laughs> and we looked at, you know, that world that doesn't seem too good. Uh, we looked at the priesthood, we look at the home life there, and we see this struggle, this uh, animosity, this uh, war that's going on. And we see that what God has done, closing up her womb. We look at all the moral condition of, 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 of the land of Israel, and we would say, one thing we must not do is forget God. Where is God in all this? Where is God in all this? The Bible says, A man's heart divides his way, but the Lord directeth his steps. There are many devices in the man's heart. Nevertheless, the counsel of the Lord shall stand. Proverbs 19.21 What was God doing? That, see, that's where we have to stop for a moment. You know, maybe... You know, we've looked under the sun <laughs> this morning. You know, Ecclesiastes, the preacher. We're, we're looking at the circumstances. We're looking at all that's going on. But we're losing sight of God. Maybe that's what's happening in our day, too. What was God doing? Well, first of all, he shut up Anna's womb. <laughs> that's what he did. Was God aware of uh, Eli's sin? His two sons, Phineas and Hapna, was he aware? Yes, he was. He, he, the judgment was coming pretty quick for them, wasn't it? We know the story. Chapter 2, chapter 3 of 1 Samuel. But a, a parallel thought, I mean a parallel circumstance that God is now, is still working, he's still on schedule. Go back to, if you're there in Samuel, 1 Samuel, notice back Ruth, one book back. One page back, actually, maybe it's in, you know, opposite, like on my Bible, it's opposite page. Notice uh, uh, Ruth chapter 4, verse 22. Now, Ruth is a love story, right? Boaz and Naomi and all, everybody, you know, Ruth. But notice it says there, verse 22, And Obed begot Jesse, and Jesse begot David. See, God's schedule, God's program in the Davidic covenant, where there would be a king upon the throne, okay? Now, yes, they're going to pick Saul for a season, but then David's going to be a man after uh, God's own heart. But see, God is working behind the scenes. Yeah, the, the, the moral condition of the nation is pathetic, okay? The moral condition of the family there, Alpina's family, is, is all just, you know, you know, one wife, we, we, we bless ladies, you know, I can't, I can't uh, imagine being like Jacob and having, okay, just, you, you're asking for trouble. You're asking for trouble. But see, God is on the throne. You see, but God is not only looking to raise up a king after his own heart, he's looking to raise up a faithful priest prophet. His name is Samuel. And before he can raise up Samuel, he has to find a woman named Hannah. Hannah. And we see Hannah here. And uh, you asked, you know, her, her, we'll look at her prayer next, okay? Uh, could, have, could not have God answered her the first time? But he didn't. You see, we're still saying, what is God doing? Well, God has closed up the womb of Hannah. God is God's aware of the corruption of the priesthood. I mean, his holy name. <laughs> okay? Eli. And we were learn about that. You know, we, we've studied that out. But you see, not only that, is Hannah, we're going to find out year by year, it says. Now we're on Hannah's prayer is heard, heard, verses 9 through 19, okay? Hannah's prayer is heard. We look at her world for a minute. But it says in verse 3, year by year, chapter 1, verse 3, yearly, he, they would go up to Jerusalem. They would go up, not Jerusalem, but up to Shiloh. That's where the, the tabernacle was. And they would sacrifice. And year by year, Penina would provoke Hannah. And year by year, I can imagine Hannah coming to that getaway, you know. You say, hey, go and have the feast, and they, you know, Alcana would give the food, and, 
and, and that, you know, it's a yearly thing, the whole family, all the wives, the two wives and all the children are there, and, and they're worshiping before the Lord, and, and of course Hannah is, is crying and weeping, and she's, she's out of sorts, you know, and, 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 and then she just can't wait to get away, in a sense, and she finds that little spot that she, she has picked out for a prayer closet, right? Every year, every year, every year, every year, she'd come back. But this time she gets an answer. He said, maybe she was ready to give up. Maybe she couldn't take it anymore. And the Lord knew that, but she see, I think the Lord is doing more than that. Why didn't she? Why didn't the Lord answer her the first time? Don't you ever ask the Lord? Lord, why don't, you know, I've, I've asked you how many times, Lord? And I, I still don't have an answer. So maybe the problem is not with God, which of course it is not. Maybe it's what you're asking. Maybe it's what you're asking. So 1 Samuel 1, 11. Verse 11 says this. This time, this is what Hannah prays. And she vowed a vow and said, Lord of hosts, if thou wilt indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid and remember me and not forget thine handmaid, but will give unto thy handmaid a man-child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor come upon his head. You see, finally she comes to the point and says, Lord, I'll give him up. I'll give him over to you. He's going to be a Nazarite. He's going to be dedicated to the Lord for the rest of his life. You see, I can imagine, you know, you know, Hannah, and, I, and I'm just, you know, my imagination runs wild sometimes, but I can imagine Hannah years earlier coming, you know, before the Lord, but neither she's, oh, she aggravates, she has another child, another child, oh Lord, take care of her. Next, next year, same, oh, that, that Penina, she's doing it again, can't you do something, Lord? Finally she comes and says, Lord, Lord, if you give me a child, I'll, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you. Yeah. You see, the Lord is saying, Hannah, you want a man-child, but I want to deliver. Hannah, you want a man-child, but I want a savior. See, this is the big picture. You see, when, when the Lord got down with Hannah, she was not only willing to give up her child, but notice the life that she wanted for him. So she, he, he was going to be a Nazarite, okay? A Nazarite. Is that what that was going to be dedicated to the Lord? A life of a Nazarite, a strict life devoted to the Lord's service. Such a commitment the Lord was looking for. Such a commitment he would honor. Dear ladies, is it, listen, if I was to, and maybe I, 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 can, uh, I can identify as, as a husband, my wife, my, my Kathy, and, and her heart cries. The heart cry and desire of every Christian mother. Oh, that I would raise up godly seed. Oh, that they would serve the Lord and for the rest of the days of their life. Isn't that what you cry? You first cry, oh God, please save them. And God has been gracious. He's, he's have saved some. And we're still asking Him to save them, right? But see, what is that prayer? Oh God, just like, make them a nominal Christian. Oh, no. <laughs> oh God, make them a missionary. Make them a revivalist. Make them a preacher. Isn't that what you cry? You're like, you might not be as overboard as I am sometimes about that. But that's what you're praying. Notice as we continue here, see not only the content of her prayer was different, but now God gives her a word. Look there if you would in 12, uh, chapter 1, 12 through 18. We're not going to read all of them, but I just want to show you. Um, there, there's this, this time with, before Eli and 
Eli says, you know, she, she, she's so burdened, she's not speaking, she's moving her lips, and Eli mistake, or, uh, mistakes that she's drunk, and, and, and no, no, no. Uh, but you see, but this time, uh, the Lord is going to give her a word. Look at verse 17. Then Eli answered and said, Go in peace, and the God of Israel grant thee thy petition that thou hast asked of him. It's like, you know, you know, the, 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 one of those little pictures, I don't know what they're called, memes or whatever, they, on Facebook, stuff like that, all these little pictures, you know. Here, here's someone, uh, let, say, Lord, give me an answer, give me an answer. And, and the Lord, as it were, is, is giving the Bible in his hand and said, there's the answer, it's right there, found in the book. It's found in the book. And so this time, the Lord gives her an answer. You know, her commitment, I'm going to give up my son, uh, he's going to be a Nazarite, he's going to be dedicated to you, and, and the Lord goes and says, okay. And she said, verse 18, let thine handmaid find grace in thy sight. Hannah, meaning grace, but I want grace. So the woman went her way and did eat, and her countenance was no more sad, and they rose up in the morning early and worshipped before the Lord you could imagine, oh, can I? Oh, can I there? Oh, Hannah, something different with you this morning, dear. <laughs> you know, something different with you this morning. What, what's, what, you know, and, and, she, and I can imagine. Do you suppose, ladies, she just kept it a secret? I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt it, because notice it says, and, and, uh, and now Cana knew Hannah, his wife. And it says, and it came, and it was right, and returned and came to their house to Ramah, and Elkanah knew Hannah, that means he had the sexual relationship with a husband and wife, and the Lord remembered her. I love that. The Lord remembered her. So we looked at Hannah's world, it's, it's uh, not much different from our world, if you think about it. I think of her prayer life. Uh, she needs some uh, adjustments for sure. She needs to get uh, on track. <clears throat> she was praying for herself. She was praying for what she wanted. Maybe, you know, the quiet her adversary. I don't know for sure. But when she got to the point of saying, Lord, Lord, take my son. He's yours. Use him as you will. Okay? God answers. But let's look now at Hannah follows through with her vow. Uh, her promise, verses 20 to 28, okay? Let's just take a moment to read that. See when we have time. Uh, follow along if you would. 1 Samuel 20, verse 20 and through 28. Wherefore it came to pass when the time was come after about Hannah had conceived that she bare a son and called his name Samuel, asked of God. Samuel, you were asked of God. And Samuel? I like that name. Saying, because I have asked him of the Lord. And when Alcana, Alcana and all his house went up to offer unto the Lord their, their yearly sacrifice and his vow, but Hannah went not up, for she said unto her husband, I will not go up until the child be weaned, and then I will bring him, that he may appear before the Lord, and there abide forever. And Alcana her husband said unto her, Do what seemeth thee good, carry until thou hast weaned him. Only the Lord established his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. And when she had weaned him, she took him up with her with three bullocks and one ephraim of flour and a bottle of wine and brought him unto the house of the Lord in Shiloh. And the child was young. And they slew a bullock and brought it the child to Eli. And she said, O oh, my Lord, as thou, as thy soul liveth, my Lord, I am the woman that stood by thee here, praying unto the Lord. For this child I prayed, and the Lord hath given me my petition, which I asked of him. Therefore also I have lent him to the Lord. As long as he liveth, he shall be lent to the Lord. And he worshipped the Lord there. Wow. You were seeing the, the, the gracious working of our Lord in this one woman. You see, her desire 
to, to be a mother first and to have a, a man, a child. I, I don't think, you know, now, you know, she's in a way silenced uh, Benino's uh, ad the adversary. But for years, her unanswered prayer, and now she comes to this, and the Lord broke light upon her. And I believe the idea is that God said, Hannah, I need a deliverer. I need, I, need, I need a judge, faithful, a man after my own heart. And so God is letting her in on, her, on his sovereign uh, dealings, okay? Notice here, in verse 11 for a minute, I, I want you to see how Hannah has been affected. It says, and, he vow, and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts. You know that's the first time that's used in the Bible? You say, you say, well, chapter, verse 3 says, O Lord of hosts. Well, see, that's a historical account of it. You know, this is the narrative, verse 11, is when it's first mentioned, and, and then either Samuel is, is in, in chapter, verse, verse 3, he's, he's, he's recounting the whole thing, okay? But see, the first time the Lord of hosts is mentioned is when Hannah makes this vow. See, she was willing to enlist Samuel into the Lord's army. Right, Sam? I'm in the Lord's army. In order to prepare to fight against the Lord's adversaries and be the deliverer for all of Israel, this vial was, I will give him up. I like Alcana. He's in it on it too. It says, only the Lord established his word. And, and so Alcana is saying, you know, what the Lord has said. Well, the Lord said, I will use him. I will use him. And so, Hannah, we've seen her world, and it's like, you know, it's pretty, pretty nasty. You see her in home life. That's pretty sad. We see her prayer life changes. See, God lets her in. She's desperate. Then she prays, Lord, you take my son. And she follows through with a vow. She promises and follows through with a promise. Let's, let's look at Hannah for a minute. You know, dear ones, listen, her name is Grace, right? Hannah means Grace. You say, well, I'm going to, you know, could I ever measure up, could you ever measure up to the, to the lady Hannah? Yeah, you can. Each one of you can. Because it's Grace, dear ones. It's Grace. I can do all things through Christ Jesus with saints. You see, God is looking for some, what, surrendered, broken vessels to be filled with His Spirit. What, 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 what to be a missionary like um, Amy Carmichael and, you know, others? No, 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 no. To be at home. Oh, that's so... Be, be raising your children. Godly seed. Teaching them. I mean, again, you know, I'm not, I'm not totally thrilled with John Wesley's theology all, all the way, but I, I, I can't ignore that God used him and Charles Wesley. I mean, if I didn't like Charles Wesley, I wouldn't sing any of his hymns. Okay? But it says, I learned more about Christianity from my mother than from all the theologians in England. Well, that's a challenge. I wonder where, who, who they uh, learned the theology from, me or, or Kathy. You know, intellectual doctrine compared to heart practice. There is a difference, right? But let's look at this, this woman, Hannah. And uh, in a way of summary for a minute. Nine different things. First of all, she was a woman of prayer. She prayed before and after Samuel's birth. Okay, she was a woman of prayer. Even as, uh, you know, no answer to prayer, she persevered. Number two, she was a woman of patience and long-suffering. We look at Elkanah, uh, well, verse 8, chapter 1, he was a little bit, or maybe a lot, insensitive. I, I can't imagine saying this to, to Kathy. Aren't I better than ten sons? And I was like, oh, I'm in the doghouse. I mean, <laughs> I'm really, ugh. But anyways, uh, but she was a woman of patience and long-suffering. She put up with her husband. In that sense, uh, Eli, for example, was a high priest that was so undiscerning, you know, he, he was not even on the same page. 
She's looking at this woman uh, praying a spiritual prayer. She can't even, you know, a broken and contrite spirit. Oh God, thou will not despise it. And Eli is not even can't even comp can't even discern. And, and Hannah graciously rebukes him. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm not a woman of the law. I'm not a drinker. Uh, no, no. A woman of patient long suffering. Number three, she was a woman of integrity. Righteousness and humility. You know, she said, No, I look at verse 15, chapter 1. And Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Count not thine handmaid for a daughter of the law. Well, I'm not an unbeliever, I'm not a wicked pagan. I'm a child of God. And she had a testimony. I think that testimony is also before her, her husband. You know, look at verse 23 for a minute. And Alcana, her husband, said unto her, Do that which seemeth thee good. Tarry until thou hast weaned him. Only the Lord establish his word. So the woman abode and gave her son suck until she weaned him. You see, uh, uh, Hannah went home and said, Alcana, this is what the Lord has said to me. Okay. And, and, and you know, it, Alcana listened. He, you know, it, it's husband and wife thing, I, I think. But it's because I believe integrity, righteousness, and humility. She, she voted her life, it was a shining testimony. Number four, she was a woman of determination. How many ladies would blame God? Well, I'm barren. I, I, you know, God is at fault. Or, you know, I, I don't, I don't, you know, so, a lot of people say I, I'm, I'm, you know, the most unscientific person on the earth. I don't believe in science. No, that's, you know, anybody knows me. You know, uh, engineering, uh, some engineering, uh, science, uh, taught science, mathematics. I, lo I love mathematics. Uh, I've, I've done every calculus theory. I can't remember most of it, but, you know, physics, chemistry, biology. So I'm not unscientific, okay? Okay, it's not... You see, and, 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 and some would run, and I'm saying, well, there's a scientific reason why this woman, is, this family can't have children. I understand that, okay? But see, God is over it all, isn't he? Now, is it wrong for them to try that? No, I, that's between their husband and wife and their, you know, and their conscience and being the word of God. That's fine, but don't leave God out of it and say, well, it's just scientific. This is scientific, you know, why we can't have children. I've read more accounts that, you know, Kathy and I have read accounts where, where, where dear sisters in the Lord were barren, could not bear children, and they tried everything, and then God, miraculously. She's a woman of determination. She didn't blame God as being evil and unfair. She didn't become bitter and forsake God. She didn't understand the why, but she determined to continue to pray and seek God. Number five, she was, she was not a superwoman. She wasn't a super saint. She, she says there in verse six, she fretted. She fretted. You know what that is? It's unbelief. Unbelief. Number six, she was a woman of vision. As displayed, displayed in her prayer song in, in 1 Samuel chapter two. Now, I understand that uh, I believe the Holy Spirit was upon her, filled her. And uh, Hannah's song is one of the greatest songs, I mean, I love it, like Mary's song. I mean, it's just fantastic. There's it's just so much depth and so much light, so much blessing in her song. But you see, uh, as, as we think about this, she was a woman of vision. She was a, a getting more than just a son. See, she was realizing that God was giving her a deliverer, a prophet priest. You see, she was concerned for the glory of God. She was concerned for the, 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 the nation of Israel. She could see the, the, moral, uh, the, the moral decay. She could see the, the priesthood and, and violating all the data. She, and, and, and much as she, in one way, she ached for a son, she ached for the glory of God and, and to return, because the glory of God is going to depart, right? 
Eli is going to be he's going to fall back and kill him. He's going to die. His two sons are going to die. The ark is going to be taken for 20 years. And remember Ichabod? <laughs> this is all a prelude. The glory of God has departed. You see, she, she was a, a visionary in the sense she saw more than just, well, I want a son. She said, I want a savior. I want a deliverer. I want God to use my son to turn Israel back to God. Back to God. This is expressed in, in, in the nature of Hannah's vow, uh, in her prayer song in chapter 2. You see, she knows something about the plan of God, and she knows that Samuel is going to be a key person in, the, in giving the fulfillment of the Davidic covenant, of that king that's going to come, who is a picture of Christ. Through the Davidic covenant, through the Davidic seed, we have the Lord Jesus. That's God's program. Notice something that I, I want you to see, and we'll go on here uh, to number 7 in a minute. Look at 1 Samuel 2.10. This is her psalm. And I just thought this was neat. She's a prophet too. Prophetess. Okay? The adversaries of the Lord, she says, the adversaries of the Lord, he says, she sees now her adversaries is not just Penina. <laughs> Maybe she was never an adversary, but anyways. The adversaries of the Lord shall be broken to pieces. Out of heaven shall he thunder upon them. The Lord shall judge the ends of the <coughs> earth. Excuse me. And he shall give strength unto his king, and exalt the horn of his anointed. Turn to chapter 10 for a minute. Look at chapter 10, verse... Chapter 7, verse 10. Get it chapter 7, verse 10. This is Mizpah. Okay, remember, the Ark of the Covenant has come back. Um, you know, the Philistines have been plagued so many times. They're, they sent the, the Ark on, on a cart. It comes back. Okay? Uh, and then um, it comes back, and then uh, the, the Israel gathers, and the, the Philistines here, and this is where Samuel is going to pray for Israel, and this is where the, the Lord is going to uh, uh, do for Israel. And, 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 but notice in verse 10, it says, and, and as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle against Israel, but the Lord, what? Thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them and they were smitten before his master. That's what Hannah prayed. That's what her song. She said, Lord, let you thunder down upon your enemies. And he, and, and he did. He gave a great deliverance to Israel. And number six, she was a visionary. Number seven, she was a woman of faith and trust. I don't know about you, would you, would you give your son up to Eli, ladies? I'm not saying that uh, I would give up my children to the public school. But, you know, I mean, that, that's, that's something there. She was a woman of faith and trust. I'll give up to Eli. Uh, the influence of Eli's sons... And, and dear ones, listen, it wasn't, well, Samuel's out of sight, now he's out of mind. That's not the way it happened. Her prayers increased. You see, that's all, her, her prayers were multiplied. Number eight, she was a woman of promise. She kept her vow and kept her word before the Lord. The Lord established his word. Samuel, he's going to be a faithful, he's going to be a servant of the Lord. Finally, number nine, she was a mother who loved her children. She loved Samuel and prayed for him. She didn't forget him, right? Every year, right? It says there in chapter 2, verse 19, every year they would come up and, uh, and now Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife. Well, verse 19. Moreover, his mother made him a little coat. Yeah, I can. You know, can you picture that, ladies? I can. How many quilts and how many hats and how many mittens and you, know, you ladies are busy. You know? Well, what is it like sometimes they say every stitch does a prayer? And brought it to him 
For year to year, when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. And then it says in verse 20 and 21, And Eli blessed Elkanah and his wife and said, The Lord give thee seed of this woman for the loan which is lent to the Lord. And they went unto their own home. And the Lord visited Hannah, so that she conceived and bare three sons and two daughters. And the child Samuel grew before the Lord. Fantastic. Let's do some application real quick. You know, one thing I find is that Hannah's spirituality is seen in Samuel. You have to probably study through this. We haven't done, we did the life of David quite a few years ago. Okay? But you see, uh, the grace or favor of the Lord was upon Samuel. You see, all these things we could say, you know, in some ways of, of Hannah, we could find them in Samuel. You see, Samuel was a man of integrity. He was a man of prayer. We looked at it in first chapter, uh, chapter 7. He was a man in close fellowship with the Lord. And dear, listen, ladies, ladies, listen, mothers, who was the biggest influence on Samuel? Well, John Wesley says it. Susanna Wesley. You know, I, I, was it wasn't the dad or was it the mother? It was the mother. <coughs> so you got big shoes to fill, dear ladies. <coughs> but you have a challenge, but also, again, there's all, kind, there's all grace there. And so, in, in, in closing, the need of the hour, more mothers like Hannah. Well, I knew you were going to say that, Pastor. I would say we need more Samuels, first of all. Who or do we need more Samuels? But where will they come from? Where will they come from? They will come from godly mothers, godly homes, godly parents. Saying, you know, yeah, I'm going to raise my, my son up for, you know, you know, how many uh, do you pray for your children? Oh, well, I want them to be a missionary. I want them to be a preacher. Oh, God, I don't want to, I want him to have a good job. I want him to have a good, you know, sound and good education. I mean, all those things are good. I, I'm not saying that's wrong. But I don't pray for my children to have a good job, first of all. I pray for my daughters to have a godly wife, be a godly husband, right? Get it right. Get it right. Spit it out right. My sons, you know. But you see, you know, godly see, Lord use them. And so, you see, that, that is the need of the hour, dear, dear ladies. And I don't have to remind you, I mentioned that, the aggressive attack upon motherhood. In our in and out of the church. You know, I, I could I could see the world going the way it is, but in the church, that's deplorable. That's blasphemy. Ladies. You can look at, I'll just give you the verses and we'll go on and we'll be done. Look at that, if you would, uh, God-given role and duties for mother. 1 Timothy 2, 12 through 15. Uh, 1 Timothy 5, 14 through 15. Titus 2, 3 through 5. Uh, take time to look at that and uh, be reminded. Maybe you haven't read that in a while. 1 Timothy 2, 2 12 through 15. Uh, 1 Timothy 5, 14 through 15. Titus 2, 3 through 5. You say, well, that's so uh, regressive in our day. So out of step with our times. You see, we're not living for our times. We're living for the Lord. We're living for His glory and honor. And we're living to obey His word. God was looking for a faithful priest, prophet, one to judge, one to lead Israel through a transitional period. From judges to a king. See, God was looking for a man of integrity and prayer a man of determination and love, a man who would care for the sheep of Israel until King David came along. But first God found Hannah. But that, that speaks volumes to me. It really does. He first found Hannah, a faithful mother, a visionary, a lover of God's honor and glory, a mother who was willing to pour out her life on, into her children, especially Samuel, Dear ones, this is the need of the hour. This is, when we talk about the high 
calling of motherhood. Finally, you say, well, none of my children have ever turned out like Samuel. Keep praying. Dear sister, dear friend, keep praying. Keep believing like Hannah did. Keep hoping like Hannah did. You see, your influence, dear lady, dear sister, listen, does not stop when your child gets out of the house, does it? See, I prayed uh, for Samuel and I got a Samson. Could you imagine, Sam? Your name would be Samson? <laughs> it's interesting, you compare the two lives, you can take time. Compare Samuel and Samson. They were both judges. Samson was the last, was before Samuel, right? And you compare their lives. You see, he had a father, Manoah, right? But the, the, he never mentions his mother. I wonder why. Not that there's, do you see that? I mean, that's, that's the study. Take the study and compare Samson and Samuel, and you'll be surprised the differences. Or you might say to your sister, I prayed for Samuel, and I got two sons that are just like Eli's wicked sons. So maybe we need to examine our lives, and even as Hannah examined her life and her prayer life. Are you praying with a new strength, even as Apostle Paul prayed, in the matter of travailing in soul? You see, you know, you, 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 and it's okay. And I talked to my mother-in-law, I talked to Sally Kathy's mother yesterday, and I, I just love it. I'm glad I have a mother still. I, I'm really glad. And I know how that is with some of us here. You know, we miss our mothers. But you see, you'll tell us, my mother said, you know, Tom, I, I labored through that, and uh, I've been with my wife in every delivery, you know, we did the home birth, stuff like that, so, you know, she, she don't have to really remind me all the pain <laughs> that she's gone through. I've been there. She wouldn't let me escape. <laughs> okay, and I wouldn't want her to be by herself. Okay? And so we've been together. And I've seen the pain. But I, I, have no, I have no clue what kind of pain that is. I'm a man, I know. Okay. Now, there's different types of pain. Okay. But see, Paul says, My little children of whom I travail and birth again until Christ be formed in you. You see, dear ladies, your challenge this morning is you travailed in natural birth to bring them into the world. Shall you not travail even more so until they are birthed into God's kingdom? Boy, that's, that's, that's hard. But that's possible, isn't it? Because the Lord's on the throne. And Hannah's name is Grace. And we have all grace. So I encourage you, dear ladies, don't lose heart. Go home and look at Hannah. Say, I, I want a Samson. Sam, I want a Samson. And, and check out your prayer life. Check out what you're praying for. Is it just for maybe, you know, a, a son, you know, to, to live on my dreams, you know, things of that sort? You know, my, my, I, I wanted to be a sports person, you know, I want to be a football player, and now I have a son, and he's going to be the best football player there ever is. That's, 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 that's it. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for this example of Hannah, and, uh, and that we, you would let us in on your sovereign plans. Lord, we thank you for our children. We thank you for each one of them. But Lord, we thank you for our mothers and travail in soul. And my mother being saved later in life. What a joy it was to sit down and talk to her about the Lord scriptures. Father, we have many, many mothers here still praying for their children. Some of them are lost and some of them are saved. And I thank you, Lord. Would you give them grace? Would you bless them? Would you encourage them? To, to many of us, they seem like mountains. The mountains need to be removed. Lord, you can, you know, there's, there's no amount of argument. There's no amount of, that any of us can give them our children, to convince them to be saved. But we know you can just speak a word. And though you tarry with us, though you try us, 
Lord, help us to examine our prayer lives. Maybe we're asking the wrong thing. Maybe if we start praying, Lord, make my son a missionary. Make my daughter a pastor's wife. Use them for the Lord, for the advancement of thy kingdom. Maybe you would save them. Just a thought. Thank you for the grace you've given to us, that, um, the dear ladies that we have. Bless them, strengthen them, encourage them. Challenge them, Lord. Deliver them from unbelief. Give them grace to pray. Give them grace to be faithful in all that they do. Thank you again, Holy Father. And I pray all these things, Father, in Jesus' precious name.